the time of rain is upon us. I know you waited long, waited for the stirring of the water. It is not the waters that God will stir for your destiny. Jesus himself will come to you. Oh, when you see champions operate, they look like madmen. But there, there is an audacity that knowing God produces. If your God is money, if your God is fame, you have fallen already. Some people are too lazy for Satan to use them. Not to talk more of God. I enjoy, you just want God to just use you the way you are. How? Will you use yourself the way you are? With the heart, the Bible says, man believeth unto righteousness. But with the mouth, what? Confession is made unto soteria. So if you are going to seek God, don't stop talking. I came with oil. I came to garnish your face with the romance that is in my heart. For I have looked upon you and you are beautiful. And when you speak a word, you make it steadfast. There is none like you. Go and read the book of Psalms and learn. Don't go empty handed. Oh Jesus. Turn your heart into words. And, and, and garnish him. And endow him. As you are talking. He will begin to enter that heart. He will begin to flow into that corridor. He will begin to influence it. And then you will begin to know. You will begin to perceive things that are beyond the scope of your physical senses hey, he begins to rise from within you because he, he himself has a weakness a broken and a contrite heart he cannot despise it oh go with words don't go empty handed and just speak in tongues that's a plastic mode it's a plastic mode. You are speaking in tongues so that you can gain ascendancy. And when you arrive at the Talmud, arm yourself with love. Make your heart into words and adorn him. Don't be stiff. He will flow. He will flow through the cracks. He will flow through the brokenness. The doorway that your willingness to submit to his discipline has opened. He will flow into it. And then, without speaking back to you, you can perceive his heart. There's a lot of perceiving business that happens down your spirit. And you need the gift of discernment to dis more to discern God and angelic activity than to discern devils and demons. As he rises, you can discern what is upon his heart. That's the kind of discernment that Lucifer had when he was a covering cherub. And he was a holder and keeper of music. And so when he discerns the heart of God, he produces sound that is consistent with the mood of God he has found. And it was in that state. He used to glow. He used to glow when he was in Zion. He glowed like a light bulb. And that's how he earned his name, the light bearer, Lucifer. The sun of the morning. It was how you know how beautiful the sun is in the morning time when it is waging war against darkness and seeking to establish supremacy. When the first rays of light begin to contend with darkness, it changes the entire horizon. You know, the darkest time is not 12 midnight, it is twilight. When light gives a command to darkness and says it's time for us to come and there will always be a contention and then you will see it, the sky will be utterly dark and then a few minutes later the victory of light over darkness will be registered and as it begins to sparkle it, it doesn't so the, there are windows in the clouds through which it sparkles out its authority and when you see it it's always beautiful that's how it sparkles through your spirit it flows through the cracks the window the opening and that's why there's no encounter you have with god that is like the previous one he flows through what is available oh my kakama oh my kaskeleta kube kela kusala endomila mama yekula kurabo shika bresko velami 
and then i think of when i survived an accident and I, I think of when when everybody rejected me and i think of when people disowned me and say i was insane because the way i was following jesus that was not how people that went to um, um theological school and came out that was not how they followed jesus i remember a day my mom saw me reading the bible at 10 p.m and 5 a.m i was still reading the bible she saw me by 5 a.m and started crying that her son wants to be mad that even people that went to theological school don't read the bible like this the madness is coming for ah. go with your mind don't keep your mind in your cupboard when you are going go with your mind and your memories the memories of deliverance of how he saved you which is ganged up to put an end to your existence so that your name will not be known they became powerless concerning your case and then you had not even known god like this so what was it that protected you when you had no protection why didn't you die at the age of eight if the devil were so strong why didn't he kill you at the age of eight okay there was a time when you were a non-believer so why didn't he strangle you to death it was not given unto him there is none holy like the lord there is none besides thee this is the psalmist trying to quantify the greatness of god and when you do that he begins to enlarge himself not every one of us was going the way of being a preacher some of us were going the way of becoming a zemo how you are here today <laughs> how you are here now <laughs> something stronger than your will went to work you know you know Jonah said I will not go and God showed him that he was stronger than his will allowed him to do what he wanted to do and what he wanted to do created a pattern that Jesus made reference to when he said I will not give you any sign except the sign of the prophet Jonas that sign Jesus mentioned was a sign Jonah was doing in rebellion but he still fulfilled a sign that brought perspective to what will happen to Jesus. It means there's something stronger than your will. If you think you are strong, it's a lie. The thing you can achieve is if it is actualization, it means God permitted you. You are not here because you chose God. It is Him that chose you. We were on different paths. Some of you were in, in terrible tests, you were looking for power those were things that satan would have exploited to corner you some of you wanted fame you wanted to be on the stage there's something stronger than your will that mingled with the equation and then you came to a point of no return even though it was daybreak and you knew that this path was heavily laden with sacrifice but you had loved him so much that you could not turn back anymore and now you are a victim of love every step you take is because you chose to every other step you take is because you have decided not because it is easy because faith doesn't make it easy faith only makes it possible we are going to pray we are going to pray oh my god my spirit is open when you keep talking to him your spirit will open it will open it will open so wide and then you begin to see visions in the innermost part of your heart how big god is and it will defy description how mighty is he is it will defy understanding and then you worship him there is none like thee neither is there any rock like our god he says speak no more exceeding proudly let not arrogancy come from your mouth for our god is a god of knowledge and by him actions are weighed oh it was her testimony that revealed that god had a weighing balance with which by which he weighed actions and determined who will rise who will fall who will become king and who will be servant because he is the one that raised one out of the dung hill and is the one that debased one who is like unto the can you use your words to paint a picture for him a portrait because if you use colors colors will be weak 
so you use words words are stronger who is like unto thee who is like unto thee who is like unto thee who is like who is like unto thee oh among the gods among the gods amadioha shongo ogugu um aleku who is like unto thee swim they were carrying swim in the village the people that saw it they died but this one didn't come to kill he came to give life who is like unto thee who is like unto thee who is like unto thee he has someone holy